discuss and the God has been dealing with us since the beginning of the year. Many of you were here yesterday for the food. We had a wonderful time yesterday in our no so left behind. And uh, if you didn't make it, the next one is coming up in February 22nd. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be great. That one is going to be a party. We are going to have a party here. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let us pray. The Bible says the entrance of the world bringeth light and understanding to the same. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we shall speak and hear now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And, uh, you know, last week God began to open our eyes to see how we are going to make some structures for this year. Because this is the beginning of a year and also the beginning of the decade. You have to really understand where you are going to know where, where you arrive. If you don't know your destination, even if you get where you are going, you will not know. So I want you this year not just to pray, but to watch also. The Bible says we should watch and pray. While we are praying, watch and see what God is doing. Today we have an interesting word that God has given to us. I want you to be very attentive. You must have evidence this year. Amen. I want you to say to yourself, I must have evidence, I must have evidence. in every area of my life. I will not lack proof. I will not lack results. Result. This year, I'm returning. With evidence. Amen. 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 If you say it consciously and you will begin to understand it, because life many times will not change until you change. You are the only one that is the architect of your life. After God has designed your life, He gave it to you. So you are the one that will take yourself there by the same grace of that God. But yes. many times we tell God, say, Wait, I know you have given me this life. Let me run it the way I want. When we carry God, coupled with what God has put in us, there is no way we will not get to our destination. Many times, I'm telling you, sometimes your destiny is scary to you. It's scary to everybody. Many times we don't know what we are really called to do, but there is a burning desire inside of a man. There is something that cannot let you sleep. There is a burden in you that keeps you awake, keeps you doing what you are doing. Somebody that does not know what you are doing or is not wearing your shoes, they will be asking you, but why are you doing this? And they ask that kind of question many times. Why do you still do this thing? Seeing that they are not seeing the result yet. But let me tell you, that same person that is asking you why, when you begin to get results, Amen. they will say, please, can you connect me? Can you help me? Can you do this for me? People are asking questions in your life because there's no result yet. But it's going to happen. That's why the, 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 the journey of a destiny is the lonely journey. You cannot carry somebody along to your destiny. They can only join you when they see what God has done. The only man that understands and knows where you are going is that God. This year we must hold him to his word. And he will bring us to that place Amen. called there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to take two cases in the Bible today to begin to understand what the result. Let me tell you, when you get the result, even the devil will acknowledge that. Because the devil has tried to stop you many times. But they could not. So when you escape by the means of the power of the Holy Ghost and you arrive at your destination, even the devil, let me tell you, the devil knows about Jesus Christ. Even unbelievers knows him. When you have results, everybody knows. Muslims knows about him. The Buddhists, they know him. But they don't believe in him as the son of God. But knowing him, everyone acknowledges that there is a man that lives called Jesus Christ. Because of the result, the evidence of what he did. What is your legacy right now? What can you look back to and say, wow, people know that I believe in this and I believe in it from. Are you just a man that exists? Let me tell you, if you just exist, life is, will not give you what is yours. The devil will beat you and beat you below your belt and keep you down if you allow him. But let me tell you something. I have a good news. There is a way already. 
that is made for you. And that way is by the way of Christ, by the way of salvation, by the way of the Holy Ghost. That is the only guaranteed route to get to your destiny. If you can hold on to God, you will get there. I'll tell us a story about a young man called Joseph in the Bible. We might not have time to read it, but it's in Genesis 42. He starts to have evidence. You know, his brother sold him into slavery because of, I told us last time, because of two things in his life. He had a coat. Hallelujah. And he was loved by his father. That was his offense. His father loved him and he had a coat. And they planned to kill him. When he didn't walk, they sold him. But we knew the rest story. He went into Egypt as a slave that was bought with money. But in the process of that, another man bought him who was a governor. And he ended up in the house of Potiphar. And after a while, because of what was deposited in him by God, because of what his father has taught him, because of the, the resilience and the spirit of diligence that followed him, everything that was committed to his hand, there was a spirit of excellence. The Bible says his master looked at him and said, I know that God is with you because the things that you are doing, I have been having slaves come in and go. So the Bible said the master made him the head of all his household except his wife, including his resources. But Joseph continued. The devil tempted him through the wife. He, he wouldn't fall for that. And let me tell you, in the journey of life, sometimes the, your enemies, people, your distractors will see the glimpse of your success and they will jump in to abort it. Don't abort your dreams. Don't abort your success. Because the devil could have used the wife of Potiphar to kill what God has put in Joseph. But Joseph ended up running away and she, he was accused of molesting her and was thrown into jail. But something began to happen. Hallelujah. In jail, God proved himself. Joseph was still successful. He was made the head of the prisoners. And God was with him again in prison. How can you say a prisoner is success? The Bible said, and Joseph succeeded in all. He was still a prisoner, but the, God is considering him a success. But there was no result. Even what he did in the house of Potiphar, he doesn't have pictures of that. He didn't have any certificate to show people that he has run business with his father. You know, many times you tell people what you have been able to do in life, and they look at you and say, hey, you, because there is no evidence. This time they will not ask you, they will be looking at your evidence to agree with you. In the name of Jesus. So Joseph has been a guy that has succeeded in everything in his life. But there has not been a physical evidence. So he was still despised. The Bible says he met a butler and a baker. Two guys that sat Phil in prison and became friends with them. One day they dressed both of them. He came and interpreted the dream. And the, the butler was freed and sent back to the palace. And Joseph asked him diligently, say, please, when you get there, remember me. What happened? He forgot. I don't know who has forgotten you. But very soon they will be coming to apply for a job through your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. The guy forgot him two years at last. But God is the God of his word. Remember that before God can take you to your future, he will show you pictures. Joseph has seen himself in the throne 15 years ago. But he didn't know how the throne will come. So if you have not dreamt about your destiny, ask God to open your eyes. Let me tell you, there's an appointed time in your life and there's an anointed time. When God will reveal it either to a man of God or to yourself, is the anointed time. When you receive the blessing, is the appointed time. Everything happened twice. That's right. Everything in life happened twice. Yes. If it has not happened in the spirit, forget it, it's not happening in the physical. There will be an anointed time when the spirit shall reveal what is about to happen. Then the appointed time will come, it will come to pass. So Joseph already knew he would be great. He didn't know how, he didn't know when, but he was looking up to that possibility from God. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
And one day, the Bible says, Pharaoh, the king, at that time, could not sleep. Had a terrible dream. Get up and he didn't know what the dream was. Called all his witches and wizards and all his prophets. They said, please tell me my dream. How can somebody tell you what you dreamt? And the king, well, nobody could tell him. Because you have to tell him the dream and interpret the dream. And all the witches of the Egyptians, the magicians, they came. He had the best of the best. They, they, they imported them from all over the world. When nobody was able to tell him what happened, then there was no confusion. The, the, the king became more troubled. He knew that dream was a big one, but he didn't know what it was. And now come this guy. Say, oh, there's this man I met in prison. And then um, he told me I'm going to be out and I came out. He told the other guy that he'll be killed and he was killed. And the king said, go get him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now destiny is beginning to knock at his door. Many of you, you are at the verge of breakthrough. You don't know it yet. Probably you don't have money. There is no evidence to show nothing. And sometimes when you are about to be delivered from every entanglement, the devil will hit you hard more. That is when you will not have money at all. That's when you will not have anything. That is when everybody will shut doors at you. It's like you say, it's like the wall has crumbled over me. But let me tell you, hold on a little bit. Because weeping may endure on the night, but the joy of the Lord comes in the morning. Your morning is about to come now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So here comes the secret service in the prison. And said they want to see Joseph. When they came and said they are looking for Joseph, somebody would have said, oh, probably they are about to kill me. Joseph said, wait. I know what this call is about. Let me shave. And they waited for him. And they were wondering, what kind of prisoner is this that is putting a demand? He came out from prison and said, no, look, I don't look well. I need a suit. I need to look like somebody that talks to a king. Go get me a designer suit. And they waited. And probably they will call their boss and say, look at what this guy is making a demand in prison. Their boss said, please, get him. Let the Lord hear that. So they have to run to the mall or whatever and cut a jacket for him. And he was well dressed on iron suit. Tell me, he was looking like somebody that can address a king. And he knew where he was going. He knew he's not going back to prison. If he was not sure of his going to fail, he would be down, he would run out with haggard beard and head on cat hair and run with a prison uniform and go there and still deliver the same message that changed the world and nothing will be done for him. But he knew he has to prepare. Many of you are not prepared. What is holding you to get to your destination is you have not been organized in yourself. Preparation is what leads to success. Let me tell you this. Miracle happens when there is preparation. Hallelujah. If a miracle comes in the altar of someone that is not prepared, it will become a disaster. Some of the things you are praying for, if God can really show you that you are not ready for it, you will not know. You say, I need this, I need that. I need this, I need that. Let me tell you something now. If there is a tax, say, if somebody can, somebody is looking for a driver, say, please, somebody can take me maybe to South Carolina, I'll pay them 50000 There is no job like that. Everybody wants to jump in it. But if you don't have a driver's license, that can be a, 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 a trap to go to jail. Even though you can drive, but if you don't have the license, it is not an opportunity for you. It's only an opportunity to somebody that has a license, that is legal, that has, know how to drive. You see how opportunity can become a cost to somebody. So Joseph, not only was he ready to be successful, not only has he been prepared because of success, not only has he managed businesses, uh, here comes Pharaoh, and Joseph will not just interpret dreams, but bring solution. Are you ready for what you're asking God this year? And they brought him in front of the king. But that's not where I'm going. The Bible said Joseph interpreted the dream, and the king said, okay. He said, please, look for somebody, appoint somebody. That will be in charge of this. That will go to every province and begin to set up these storage places. There will be famine for seven years and there will be abundance for seven years. Right now we have abundance. It is starting this year. Let's begin to gather food, store them, dry them up. After seven years there will be famine. No nation survives even when you are famine. Even America, as rich as America is, if there is no rain, there is a drought in the whole of this country for one year. I'm telling you. People will be selling their cars for food. That was what happened in Egypt. And the fellow said, well, who else can be able to do this if not you? He never applied for that job. Many of you, after you live here today, your mentality will change. You begin to build on yourself. 
You don't have to apply to the job. Somebody will just call you and say, ah, are you still looking for that job? They say, yeah. I say, please, there is an opening in our office. Can you please come? They will be begging you to take the job. Position, businesses. Some of you have given proposals to people, they put it in trash because they have not seen that evidence in you. They have not seen that ability and capacity that you can do what you say you can do. And all of a sudden, somebody starts to tell them about you. In fact, there was a sister I went to school here with. We, we, we were doing oracle then. I never told her I was a pastor. And we used to go out and eat together. Never told her I was a pastor. I was pastor in the church then. So, because I know the mentality of people. One day, a lady, she knows, which I also know, because later they met and they started talking, they were from the same community. And my name came into their discussion. He said, Pastor. He said, Pastor? He said, Yeah. He said, No, I, I know him. The lady said, I know him. I've been to their church. I've attended. He said, Really? I'm coming this week. If he's a pastor, let me come and see. And here comes me in church. I saw that lady there. I didn't know who invited her. After I said, She came to visit. So the pastor didn't tell me. I said, so I should be running everywhere, telling everybody I'm a pastor. Say, please, I have this problem. Can you help me pray for this thing? If I have told her, she will not tell me her problem. Because we have become like friends, colleagues. But now, somebody else she respected told her that this man prayed for me for this and this happened. Pray for me for this. He said, I want to see. She didn't tell me. She came to church and she sat at the back that day. And I was I saw her. I was wondering, did I invite her? I didn't know how she came, but she now told me. Evidence. It's what the devil cannot stop. Evidence is what your enemies cannot stop. When you have results, even demons will be... Let me tell you, many of you have been inviting people to church, say, come, let's go to church. They're looking at you, you that have been going there. What has happened in your life? Let something that you have been working on, that God has incubated, let God begin to show his light upon your, your side, and things begin to change. You are shining now, those people will say, hey, where do you see you are going to church? Please don't go. Next Sunday, I want to go with you. He said, I thought you said you don't want to come before. He said, don't worry. That church, I think there's something happening there. They are coming with a bad intention. Their, their mindset is wrong. But let them come. Because they have seen that you are evidence. Many times we want to complain how many people did not like us. How many people have not believed in what we are saying. Believe in yourself first. And keep walking. And hold on to God. You will see God. Joseph did not bother about his brothers that sold him. Never bothered about the house of Potiphar. All what he did here built up a very big business for the man. And he was accused wrongly. Never bothered when he was in jail. He was giving glory to God. He knew there is a day that is coming. A day of showing forth. That day is coming to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a day that God will show you forth to the world. All the questions of your life will be answered. And the Bible says when he told Pharaoh, say, there's nobody. Pharaoh said, but we are the man. And he was hired. And a position was created. A position of a prime minister, a deputy. That has never existed on earth. And that here comes Pharaoh now. Putting Joseph in charge. What he told Joseph, he removed his ring and put upon him. And he told him that the only thing that is above you in this kingdom, not just Egypt, in the whole world, because Pharaoh was the king of the world, is that throne. He said, nobody will leave their leg in this kingdom unless you say so. Including his parents that are not there now. They are far away, but Egypt was in charge of the world. We well, might be the president of America in those days, but the, the difference is that you are a king. You, live, you are there for life. The king said, come, nobody lift up their leg in this kingdom unless you say so. The only thing that is above you is that throne that you are looking at. And here comes Joseph becoming a, a king now in the foreign land. All charges dropped. Everything that I've brought is record. I don't know what record the devil has put upon your life. But let me tell you, when the wind of God begins to shine, when the evidence comes, every criminal record is out. In that name, the government will be begging you, say, please, we want to remove this, we want to remove this, because they need what you have. And famine came upon the land after the seven years of abundance. Now his brothers are beginning to be in want. His father, everybody was in want now. They sent his brothers to Egypt to go and get food. And they showed up. It was that boy that they sold. They didn't know yet that was there. Let's see Genesis chapter 42. Because I've been telling these stories, but I want us to read maybe one or two verses. Because I don't want to bog us with the Bible, but you go and read all the whole book of Genesis chapter 40, 41, 42. Look at 42 now. 
verse 5. Let's start from 5. Maybe 5 and 6 we read. 5 and 6. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we still here? Yes. The Bible says, And the sons of Israel went to buy grains among those who journeyed. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. Now Joseph was governor over the land. Not governor, he was prime minister. And it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their face on the earth. This is the same people he told the dream. They were angry with him because he had a dream and he had a coat. He told them that he saw a little star and 11 stars and the sun and the moon. And those 11 stars were bowing to this little star. Ah! Even his father told him, shut up! Never you say this again. So you mean that me and your mother will bow down to you? And here comes his brothers. Destiny, let me tell you, prophecy cannot lie. And the Bible says, though it tarry, wait for it. It shall come to pass. It will not tarry. It must come to pass. The word of God has gone ahead of him. God opened his eyes to see his destiny. I told you before, God can take you to your future. He will show you pictures. Joseph had seen the throne of Egypt, but he didn't know what it was. He saw it and God gave it to him when he was 15 years. Now 15 years have gone by. It might be long that you have been waiting for that thing. Don't give up now. Don't sell your bed right. Don't go the short way. Don't corner yourself because it shall come to pass. His brothers came and they were bowing. Bowing down to the man that they say we will never bow, and they sold him. Look at the bow again. Genesis 43 26. Oh, my, 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 my. Go and get result. And you see all your enemies begin to bow to you. Amen. They might not like to bow, but they have to bow. Because they need you. People don't care. Let me tell you, people will throw away their integrity and their pride when they see results. I don't care how proud the person is. When people are still proud, they have not seen value in what you are bringing. When there is value in what you are bringing and they need it, their pride will be out of the window. They will wait for you for hours. If you say wait till tomorrow, they will wait. Say sleep outside, they will sleep. Because they know what they are looking for. Go and get results this year. Let there be evidence. And you see your enemies come, crumbling down, bowing down. They follow it everywhere. 43, 26. Are we there? Look at Genesis 43. The latest story that happened here, but I don't have to go to all that. What he did with them, how he played chess with his brothers. The Bible says, and when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and they bowed before him on earth. They bowed again, but I wouldn't have to go how many times they bowed to him. They keep bowing down to this boy. This is the boy they sold into slavery. Go and get result. Amen. This year you must come with evidence. Amen. You must. It is not something of negotiation. Let me tell you, that is the only thing the devil respects. When you have result, the devil will bow down even. Yes. The devil will come. The devil does not care. Uh, he knew he couldn't stop you. When the devil discovered that you are unstoppable and he has planned and set trap and you escaped and you have that result in your hand, here comes the devil bowing. This year, evidence must be in your hand. You are coming home with a great result. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your result can cause even your enemy to give you a gift. Haven't you seen when you are, you people that you know that not even a dime, their, their, their penny can come to you. Because how terrible and wicked they are to you. But here they hear about the business that you are running and the business is blowing and everybody is talking about it. They are coming, they are buying and they are waiting to see you. They want to confirm. Maybe they, they have heard their voice. They have paid or they have not paid. They'll be walking around waiting for you. They will even give gifts. They will say, take the change. Everybody wants to tap on that anointing. Success have brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when you don't have money, when you are not successful, even if you live in the street way, everybody will say your house is too far. But become successful and go to the mountain and leave. People will say, I'm passing by. There is no way to pass by in the mountain. I just say, let me come in Amen. and check whether you are around. Hallelujah. Get evidence of success. And here comes cousins and nephews and aunties, friends and frenemies, enemies, demons coming to you. The devil respects money. 
Because if he couldn't stop you and you get it, you must be stronger than him. The Bible says money is the defense and wisdom is the defense. Go and get result this year. And you see whatever has never happened. People will begin to do favor to your brothers, to your sisters. When they hear, ah, that's the sister of this one. Ah, please, ah, come in. Can we do this for him? Your sister didn't ask for nothing. Your brothers will not ask for help. Help will begin to come from everywhere. What, what can only do that is result. Result. Get the result that it is needed and you see the devil bow down for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about the little guy also that became a great man in the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. It takes result and evidence to break the pride of men. Very proud, very proud. His brother still hated him. If they can kill him that moment, they are bound at the will. But they can't change the result. Sometimes people hate you so much that they don't want to associate with you, but the result you have. Is what they are looking for. They will come and be bound down to you because result supersedes anybody. Even the devil respect result. Jesus Christ, the Bible said, Nicodemus came to him by night, John chapter 3, verse 2, and said, We know. We know that no man can do what you are doing except God be with him. Why did he come in the night? He was among the leaders of the Jews. So they have spoken about Jesus in their meeting. He didn't want to associate with him in the day. But he has to come by night and bow down. And say, we know that you have something that we don't have. Even though I'm not going to be in your church. I will not be able to celebrate you outside. But I acknowledge what you carry. And Jesus told him, he said, the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. He said, how can I be born when I'm old? He said, that which is born of the flesh is of flesh. That which is born of the spirit. Spirit. He said, the man be born of the water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The man that died became a born again. He was, he was already rich. The Bible said Nicodemus was the ruler of the Jews. But the same came to Jesus by night. Your enemies will begin to look for an address. Just go get result this year. In the name of Jesus, your result will cause a revolution in your community. People that have despised your family begin to bless your parents, your brothers and your sisters. Your children will be celebrated just because they have your name. Hallelujah. Oh, get result and you see the devil crumbling in the name of Jesus Christ. Result. Evidence of what you are doing. Many of us are praying and praying, praying, praying. Yeah, prayer is good. Work while you pray. Pursue. For now shall surely overtake. A lot of Christians, we, if you say prayer, we have prayed. We have prayed, but we have not worked. We are praying that God said, I've opened the doors. I've done everything. But we are still somewhere praying. We are doing that because the door is already open. Go out and get it. Go ahead and get it. But we don't want to leave our comfort zone. We are afraid of the unknown. God cannot deliver what you can do to you. Hallelujah. And here comes this guy. First Samuel chapter 17. I'm just going to pen the story and because of our time and the way we are going to pray. Because we must pray today. We are in the presence of God. Amen. Oh, In the name of Jesus, look at what happened here. This guy, the guy is a young boy, David, coming from a family of eight young men. And the Bible says he was the least among his family brethren. And one day, when God has rejected Saul, the king of Israel at this time, so David had been doing something behind the scenes. Let, let me tell you something. Until you have evidence, people don't believe what you say. I don't care how many times you tell them, I have managed big businesses. I have done this, I've done that. They want to see it on Facebook. They want to see pictures. They want to see certificates. They want to see award. If you don't have those things, even if they know it, they will deny it. But sometimes, when there is an evidence of that, you don't have to show nothing. You want to tell them that this, and they say, don't worry, we know. We know. That's why we call it. You say, let me tell you what I know. Don't worry, sir. We know. Let me give you my resume. We know. They have seen it. When evidence comes, you don't have to explain yourself to everybody. They will see it. So here comes David. The Bible says, and God said, I have rejected Samuel. When I rejected Saul, when Samuel was praying for God to restore the glory of God upon Saul. And God said, I rejected him. I found a man in the house of Jesus. Now take the horn of oil and go there and anoint me a king. And here comes Samuel into 
the, 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 the city of Bethlehem, and everyone was wondering what is Samuel coming to our city to do? You know, this Samuel is a king and a priest. He can either bring a cause or bring blessing. Everybody said, are you coming peaceably? He said, yeah, peaceably I come. He went straight, hallelujah. And the Bible says he came to the house of Jesse and he told Jesse what he has come to do. So Jesse was happy that God had chosen his family. And here comes his son, we get to parade. The first son came and he was looking very tall, handsome. He had everything that makes up the king. And Samuel tried to pour the oil. The oil did not come out. They walked until the seventh person walked by. And Samuel said, what is happening? Is there any other son that you have? Father said, no, but there's one small boy. He's in the field. He was not even considered. Because his father could have said, hold on, sir, please, can you give us five minutes? Let me go get one of my sons. They said, one of your sons. Why did you bring some and you didn't bring everybody? So David was not considered by his parents. Neither was he considered by his brothers. He does not look like someone that would be a king. He was still a teenager. He was not even up to the age to go to the military. Hallelujah. But God does not go by the rules of men. God is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. He knows the end from the beginning. The Bible says God sits at eternity. Many of us are planning to get to eternity. God is already sitting there. And now somewhere give them a charge. Because now, when it's divine, you will know. Mm -hmm. Say so nobody sits down until he comes. Go get him. So both the father, the mother, everybody, when they, if they say, mate, yeah, everybody's standing. Dogs are standing. Cats are standing. Nobody's sitting down. Someone himself is standing. Say, so go get him. So now the family will start to know the weight of what is about to happen to them. This is serious. And David was in the field, and they, they brought him. I know when they told him, someone looks for you. David will wonder, what have I done this time? Because David, to his father, was a liar. His father has started to be a liar. His, his father looked at him and said, never you say this again. He came one day from the field and said, Father, do you know that a bear came and took one of my sheep? I pursued it and I smote it. And the father looked at him a bear. What is the tail of the bear? No tail. Where is the head? No evidence. The father said, go. Please, I think something is wrong with you. And he came back one day and said, Daddy, you know what happened? A lion came and took my sheep. I pursued the lion and I smote it. And the father said, Lion, David, is something wrong with you? Do you know that Samson killed one lion? And Samson was celebrated for the rest of his life. But David killed the lion. Nobody knew about it. I don't know what lions you have been killing and bears. And nobody knew. This year you are coming with evidence. Amen. I said, everything you have been doing behind the scene is coming to the front. Amen. So now David is showing up as a liar and who is, and nobody considered it to be anything. And he stood there. And the oil began to pour upon him. Oh my God. That was the day divinity met humanity. Yes. His destiny came, came knocking. Pouring down upon him, all his body was soaked with oil. Ah. And he woke up. He slept last night as a man. Today he's waking up a king. But now the fact is that the throne is still occupied. I don't know who's occupying your throne. Ah, la bagada, but God is going to set up a Goliath Amen. that will dethrone that man. Amen. So David has been carrying this oil now, but no throne. He went back and still be doing the shipping. Uh, taking care of the sheep as a shepherd boy and God began to plan what is happening. From nowhere there was a war and the Philistines began to come against the children of Israel and they already knew about Saul who was the tallest man in Israel. He has been to military, he was their general, he has fought battles. But now Goliath has five brothers that were giants. Goliath also has been a champion all his life. So Goliath know that we have people that can override these people. So they challenged Israel. And the first day it was on the mountain, on the mountain, and they were talking trash to each other. But after a while, they saw Goliath keep coming back, chastising them. Jews went to the valley. Forty days have passed now. Nothing has happened. And Goliath said, give me one man. If he beats me, then you have one. We will serve you for life. But there was no one man. Everybody was looking at the king. You have been in the military forever. You have been fighting wars. Can you help us here? The king was hiding himself. And destiny keep calling. The father of David now has not heard news. There was no CNN, no internet to Google and see what is going on in the battlefield. You have to physically go there to be able to see and bring back news. There were no pressmen that would be bringing news to the city every day. So everybody knew their sons have gone out to war. But they don't know what is happening. 40 days have gone back. His father packed some cheese and some bread and some things. Say, go to the field. Find your brothers. And now, the Bible says his father held his ear and said, 
Bring me back news because I know that you like to fabricate things. You like to lie. Bring me back news. Then he said, I will do that. He said, make sure you see the captain of the military. And then he carried food and he slain and walked to the back of him. And he was coming close. Goliath was coming out. This is the battle of God. We don't know yet. But God has a way of announcing you. I don't care what is inside of you. The day of showing forth is coming. Yes. Because God will show you forth this Amen. year. Only hold on to your dreams and destiny. Never you look to the right or left. Because your destiny can only fit your sides. Don't try to carry your brother, your sister, your wife, your children. They cannot fit with you. When you cross over to the other side, you can put the heavy hand and bring them where you are. But destiny is the lonely road that you only can go by yourself. Many times we, we, we have a dream from God. We have a vision. We want to consult the whole world and they will advise you. How can somebody take you to where they have not been? You are telling them what they have not achieved by themselves. They will always give you a wrong advice. They will tell you it's not possible because they want it for themselves. And you say now, God says you should do it. Or you say, I want to start this business. And they are not in business. What do you think? They will say, if you go there, your money is gone. I've seen people, they will start to come with stories. Look for the worst people that didn't make it in that business. Nobody will tell you that man sat there with nothing and made it. But they'll say, oh, this guy put millions and he lost it. The other one went to school and lost it. That one is mad. This is on the street. People go to jail and all that to keep your dreams. Go in the Lord if you have the cops and you are being burdened about that. Pray and move with God. And then we came and looked at the guy and he listened to Goliath. And he asked them, who is this man? But they say, ah, this guy, they began to give him the history of Goliath. He has been the champion all his life. He has been fighting for years. He has won this medal. He has gone to this battle. He came back. He got to, and he, they told him all that. He said, I can kill him. And they say, you? Probably he was wearing a shirt, maybe a singlet, just casual. He said, I've killed a bear and a, a lion. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That will challenge the army of God. Now he's bringing God into the battle. God has been introduced. Amen. They were fighting before they never called God. They knew God. They prayed before they went to the battle. But they did not involve God in the battle. Hmm. And here comes this wise boy. See, this guy is not challenging the Israel. He's challenging God. He's challenging the army of God. How can you fight an army of God? It's not possible. And the Bible said, as he was talking to the guy, the guy said, please, connected him to the captain from the captain. His brother saw him say, liar, what are you doing there? His brother said he should go home. The Bible said David did not listen to his brother. He disobeyed him for the first time. When you are in your destiny, even your family will say, come out. Your friends will say, you can't make it. Your husband or your wife sometimes will try to stop you. They are not themselves. The demons will go into them. And Let me tell you, Jesus was about to leave. Die. And he was telling his disciples, say, very soon I'm going to leave. Peter said, you cannot die. I will fight to my last blood. Jesus said, Satan, get you behind me. Because how can you stop my mission? Peter was thinking he was trying to help him. He said, no, we will fight. When the trouble came, he tried to fight. But Jesus said, don't worry. Peter, put back your knife. Because then that fight will swallow that by his word. When he saw blood gushing out from the master, a boy told him, Man, are you not one of them that followed him? Peter looked at him and said, no, me, I don't know this. I've never seen him before. He denied him. The same man that said, I will fight with my last blood. When he saw it for real, because by this time they were talking tough, trash, because they think that Jesus, because he has supernatural power, he will call that angel. Something will happen. They want to be on the side of success. Now when it looks like success is no more there, everybody began to withdraw. I told you, evidence attracts everybody. Even you have enemies. Pride will go out of them. And the Bible said, Jesus, David now spoke to the captain. The captain said, please, I can't approve this. You are a boy. You have never been in the military. We, we have never seen you fight anywhere. There was no evidence of this lion and a bear. You are telling us stories. His brothers could not even concord. Look at how wicked his brothers. His brothers have heard that story. They knew that David said it with the vein of his blood and said it that I did this. They didn't want to agree with it. They were telling him, go home. But he was brought in front of the king. And he had the guts and said, look, I have killed a bear and a lion. This man shall be like one of them. Amen. Hallelujah. The Amen. king looked at him. For this boy to have a God to stand in front of me and say this, and that is punishable by death. If you lie to a king in those days, you are not coming out alive. He will die. He despised everything. 
What if David couldn't kill Goliath? He could have been a public show of disgrace and shame. But he knew what he had and he knew what God he carried. He said, I can take on the man. And the king said, well, you, are, you have a very compelling passion about this thing. That's why your dreams and aspirations, you must be passionate about it. You are going to be the best person to sell yourself. Nobody can introduce you better than yourself. So we tell people, can you connect me, connect me, connect me, connect yourself to God and men will be connected to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. When you get God, you get gold. Yes. David has connected to the almighty God. Here comes the king looking at him. There was no evidence, but the king was sold. So okay, take my military uniform. And Saul, Saul was tall. David was not grown yet. He was still a boy. And when they put on that uniform on him, the Bible said, <laughs> he couldn't even take a step. The metals and the medals and all the things. He said, I can't wear this side. But by then, Saul have transferred the glory of Israel to him. Here, yes. this is two kings exchanging things in the spirit. Yes. There's a transfer of power and glory. And Saul gave him his sword. The sword probably was half of David's height. <laughs> he can't even leave the sword. He says, Sir, please, I have never fought with all these things. Let me go with what I'm used to. Amen. And they are looking at him saying, but what? We have been in battles. You have never been anywhere. But let's see what you have. And the Bible says when David was in Jerusalem, we are going to read that now before we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17. Oh, Lakireba Sakarababa. This year you are coming home with evidence. Amen. Oh, my command shall see and know that you are not serving a dead God, but a living God. Amen. I don't care what the challenges are today. Joy, the Bible says, weeping may endure but the night, but the joy of the Lord cometh in the morning. Your morning season is about to come. Amen. It's a coming now. You are going to see a bright day. Something tangible happening. First Samuel 17. Look at verse 36 because of our time. Hallelujah. Verse 36. The Bible says, the how labagashi masatayabaka. Look at David now in front of the king. He said, your servant king put the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the army of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. The king now looked at him, and Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. He can't. When you have results, you know what you are saying. David knew he has gotten those results, but there was no evidence. But now he was passionate about the result he has. I have done this thing before, and they, they are looking at you and say, Where is the evidence? He said, But I know that I have done it. Just give me this one chance. You don't have to give me two, just this one chance to prove to you that I've done it before. And the Bible says, He came. I want you to see the exchange between Goliath and David. That is, that is going to shock you. Uh, uh, let's 44 and the Philistines said to David come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds no there was a time he cursed him with their God let's go back to 43 so the Philistines said to David am I dog that you come to me with stick and the Philistines cursed him cursed David with his gods. So you now see, the, this is not a physical battle. The God of the Philistines was Dagon. That was the same God that brought down Samson. Dagon was in Delilah. It's the spirit of Dagon was the God of the Philistines. And the Jews have the living God. So, Goliath came and looked at this boy and said, am I a dog that you are coming with a stick to whip me? I'm going to kill you and tear your body and cut. And the bears of the earth will feed on your cat. I curse you with Dagon. Ah, David said, Dagon, let me show you that I have the living God. Look at what David responded to him. Verse 45. Don't let the devil to have the last word in your life. I don't care what they say. Speak after they have finished speaking. Let them finish. You can't stop them. Dagon says, surely they shall gather, but not by God. Whosoever yeah. gather against you shall fall for your sin. Yeah. So they are gathering, I can't stop. Let them gather. Let them conspire. Let them do. But when they finish, I will put a word. The Bible says, there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment, you yeah. shall likewise condemn. Amen. Don't let the devil have the last word. The man has spoken. And David came back in 44. And the Philistine said to David, come to me. And I will give your flesh to the best of the air and the, and the beasts of the field. 
Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, with spear, and with javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defied. David is not saying you have come to me. I'm nobody, but I'm putting God back to you. One angel, the Bible says, can destroy a whole nation, a whole country. Do you know how many angels of legions of angels that was standing with David? David just invited God. He never fought that battle. God took over the battle. Many of us are fighting so much because we have not invited God. We don't want to allow God to fight the battle. Let me tell you, the battle is the battle of the laws. Let if the devil challenge you with poverty, they are not cursing you. They are cursing your God. Go back to God. Say the devil have said that I'm poor. And if you can look at me, I'm looking poor. But God, if you are a rich God, prove yourself. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, if you are single and the devil is saying marriage is nowhere to be found. Go back to God and say, God, I didn't take myself single. I have done everything. Make sure you are right. I have done everything to be a good wife or a good husband. But the wife is not coming neither is a husband. Prove yourself in marriage. If the devil is fighting in your job and they are raving and raging, the Bible says the hidden will always rage and rave. But God let them have the last word. When you go to your closet, say, God, Lord, you have heard what they say. They are not talking to me because if they trash me, they trash you. I am a representative of heaven. I carry your glory. I carry your image. When you put that, you have put God in the battle. David said, you talk to me. You are not talking to me. You curse me. You are not cursing me. You are cursing God. I come to you with the army of God. I challenge you. The Bible says he threw a sling. One stone. And David, here come that seven cubit tall man that is an improper human being. He fell like a loaf of bread. But he didn't fall backward. That's when you know that there's a miracle. Haven't you read it? Yes. The Bible says when the stone came upon him, he fell forward. He fell forward. There's not anything that he, even if his small thing touched you, you have to go backward. But David's stone probably never touched him. As the stone was coming, one of the angels just poked his head to push him down, killed him. So he fell forward. Nobody knew he had died. But David was coming forward and running towards him. He had nothing. He didn't have even a sword. The Bible says he went and stood on top of Goliath and took Goliath's sword and cut off his head and took his head up. The moment the head of Goliath went up, many of you are enemies, their head is about to go up now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the Philistines began to run and Israel pursued and killed and slaughtered. But when they came back, David came not just coming home with the sword of Goliath, which is one of the evidences, but he came with the head of Goliath. The Bible says he came with the head of Goliath to Jerusalem. And trust women, they know the size of money. The moment women saw him, he still stayed in blood, carrying the head of Goliath. They said, Saul have killed thousands, but David have killed ten thousands. The song changed. He was on every network the next day, having an interview on CNN, Fox News, ABC, NBC. Everybody was booking him. Let me tell you, go and get evidence. Amen. Get results. Amen. You will see that even your enemies shall be coming and bowing. People will begin to connect with you. Everything you have been looking for begin to look for you. Even a wife was given to you for free. So I'll say, I have seen what has happened. Take my daughter. I want to be in law to this great man. Even though Saul hated him, from the time he killed Goliath, Saul knew that power has changed. Yeah. You know, he knew that someone said, yeah. God has rejected you. Yeah. And he don't know who will be the next king. But in his eyes, he's looking at the boy now, yeah. becoming a king. The Bible says he told Abner, say, follow this boy. Go and find out whose son he is. Yeah. And when they came to the palace, David didn't want him to go and spy him. Probably Abner will kill him. Abner was one of the generals of Saul. And very terrible and wicked man. The Bible says, David told him, I'm the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. So he called Abner and said, don't worry, don't worry anymore. And the Bible said, at the sight of David, Jonathan fell in love. The love was so strong. Jonathan saw him for the first time and fell in love with him. And cornered him by the side and said, make a covenant with me. I know that you will become king one day. Make a covenant with me. Get evidence this year. And demons will be bound down. Get evidence. Friends will come back that you have lost. Don't be chasing them, asking them, when are you coming back to see me? You are used to come to my house. What happened? Don't worry about that. Go and get results. They will be begging to book appointment to see you. Even if you give them one year, they'll wait. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Get evidence. This place will be packed. People, you have been telling your friends, they come to church, they say, ah, okay, I'll come. Sometimes they come, they go. 
Let it be that something happens. Say, ah, sister, we see that things have changed for you. What is the they say, I told you that church, we pray a lot. And you know, they say, please, when are you going next time? Take me. Their motives are wrong, but let them come. God will use your evidence, your result to prove even your, your, your enemies, your haters. God is using your result. This year, you are not going back the same person. I don't care how you have come before, but from today, you shall come back with evidence. There must be evidence of your service in the house of God. How can a servant of God be that low? The devil is rubbing it upon you. They are not rubbing it upon you, but upon your God. Go back to that God and say, God, you are the one that called me. Prove yourself in this thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Can we stand on our feet? Just one prayer, maybe one or two. Uh, I don't want to give you what to pray. I just want you to pray as God leads you now because this is about destiny. Lord, I desire tangible results, evidence of growth, miracle, increase, and anointing. Let God begin to do it in your life. Talk to Him. Say, do something, Lord, for, for me today. In any area of your life, in marriage, in business, in jobs, in family, please. Ah, are you sick in the body? God, men have mocked me because of this sickness. Women have mocked me, but prove yourself. If you are a healer, heal me. The Bible says by the strap of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Talk to God. I want you to pray. Be angry in the spirit. Let your spirit man be very aggressive and angry about what is happening. Let God visit your family today. Let God begin to visit your business, your job. Let God visit your life. Something great, something tangible begin to happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God, visit me. God, do this for your glory. The Bible says God blesses us not because of us, but for his glory. Because his name is at stake in your life. His name is at stake in your family. His name is at stake. Let the name of the Lord be glorified again. The devil is trying to laugh. No, 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 no. You must have the last word. Yes, Lord. Let the fire of God come upon you. Yes, Lord. Mention the areas of life that God's evidence is needed in you. That area that you will evidence. Mention it. Tell God, Lord, visit me. Lord, touch me. Lord, touch this church. I can you a man of God watching me? Ask God for increase, for favor. Let the wisdom of God come upon you. Let favor come upon you. Let the anointing increase. Ah, you have been preaching. Let miracles, signs, and wonders be wrought through you by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. You have been in business. You have been working in this company for a while, and things have not changed. Today is a new day. A new day has come. A, a new dimension. God is taking you to dimensions. There are dimensions of mysteries and power in the kingdom of God. That is where you are going. You are coming with evidence today. Ah, you shall come with evidence. You must arrive with evidence. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Lord, give me evidence now. I need it. Give me evidence. Huh? Give me evidence, evidence in my family. Let evidence come in my church. Let evidence of God come to our business. Lord, I hear you. I hear that you are searching. I hear that you are searching for a man. I hear that you are searching to somebody that will bring your glory. I am available. Talk to God. I hear you are searching for a woman. You are searching for a man. You are searching for somebody. I am available. Here I am. Use me to prove your glory. Use me to prove yourself. Use this ministry, custom assembly. Use my anointing to prove yourself on this life. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God, let the evidence of your service to God, let the evidence of your Christianity, let the evidence of your worshiping God, the evidence of your salvation, let it come. No, you are not just calling the dead God. The Bible says his hands are not too short to deliver us. Neither are his ears are deaf to hear us. God has heard you and you shall come home today. You are returning with an evidence. Everything that is a question in your life, the answers are coming. Receive it now. 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 Batokorobo. Bekele basaka. Masika tababa. Yeba dashi korobobo. Masakanda rababa. Nekorobo sekele baba. Masika tayaba kigara. 
Nakilo Moshokoro, Nebagasi Karabababa, La Prada Santa Mamma, Nakilo, Taya Basaka, Eke de Basaka Baba. Lord, we want evidence. We need result. We need result. We need result in this place. Enough of the devil mocking us. We need result in our lives. We need result in our families. Lord, show me your result. Make a name for yourself in my life. Make a name for yourself in their lives. Make a name for yourself in this ministry. Make a name for yourself in their businesses, in their jobs. Make a name for yourself in that ministry, in that pastor, in that man of God. Begin to pray. I need result. I need result in my marriage. I need result in my job. I need result in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, in the way. Begin to thank him. It is done. Thank him for it is done. Thank him for it is done. Thank him for it is done. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is all. Put your hand together for Jesus. Oh, come on. As you are living here today, oh, wow. something, something that has never happened begin to happen for you. The Bible says Saul went into the house of Samuel, searching for the donkey. Just like a boy. He left the next day as the king. Let the evidence come upon you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Offering time.